The foundational project for the book binding student is the pamphlet binding. It's really too easy, so I'm only going to demonstrate it here as a stepping stone to the more challenging and therefore more rewarding project, the double pamphlet binding. I like beginning with pamphlet bindings since they require skills you'll be using in later, more advanced bindings. The first of these skills is tearing large sheets of text weight paper down into signatures using your bone folder. A signature is a stack of folded paper. If you would like to get even more involved with definitions, a signature is a stack of folios. A folio is a piece of paper folded hamburger style or across the short length in half. A stack of signatures is called a text block. When I first learned how to bind books, I would use a steel paper tear bar to cut the paper into separate sheets, neatly stacking them into piles of three or four, depending on the weight of the paper, three for heavier paper, four for lighter paper. I would then use my bone folder to fold each stack of folios into signatures. Later. When I studied bookbinding in college, my professor showed me how to use my bone folder to complete the entire operation, reasoning that a paper tear bar is expensive while a bone folder is affordable. At the time, I was resistant to change. In the many years that have passed, I have gravitated heavily towards the bone folder method, though I still use a paper tear bar for some applications and prefer it to the bone folder for tearing paper for non-bookbinding applications. In this tutorial, I'm going to use the bone folder method. If you'd like to use a paper tear bar, they're not as expensive as they used to be. I have a short video demonstrating that process for tearing a full 22 inch by 30 inch piece of cover weight Reeves BFK down to six eight by 10 inch sheets in preparation for printing a lithograph. When handling paper, especially big sheets, it's best to handle it by opposite corners to avoid kinking or denting the paper. Start by laying out a sheet of 25 by 19 inch paper on a clean surface. Paper has a grain direction. It's important to know which way that grain direction is running so you can know how the hinge or fold of the book should be oriented. A good way to test the grain direction of paper is to gently roll the paper under your hand. If it resists less one way than the other, you know that the grain is running parallel to the roll. I'm getting more resistance along the long edge of this paper, which is a half sheet of the full 25 by 38 inch version of this paper. The grain direction is running short this way. Join the corners at the top and bottom of the paper and pin the edges of the paper down with one hand while lightly sliding your bone folder down the paper toward the fold edge. Crease the paper with the belly of the bone folder. Insert the bone folder into the bottom edge of the crease and holding firmly on the bone folder, flick it out, away from the paper. Continue this movement, inserting, flicking, and inserting until you have torn past the halfway mark. Rotate the paper and fold it over, taking care to align the edges and fold the paper accurately. Insert the bone folder as before into the center or gutter of the paper and flick the bone folder out away from the crease. Tear just beyond the halfway point. Rotate the paper one more time, fold it in half, and crease the fold heavily with the belly of your bone folder. Do not tear this time. Repeat the process with a second sheet, followed by a third sheet to create three signatures. The first is a practice signature to be used in a single sheet pamphlet binding. The second will fill the text block for the double pamphlet binding.
super stiff. Very stiff paper. Directions going here, but I think it's long on this paper. Yeah, there's definitely more resistance this way. We know the grain direction is running this direction, so we want to line up our signatures so that they hinge according to the grain direction of the cover. The dimensions of the cover for the single pamphlet book are easier to figure out than the double pamphlet book. Simply measure the height of your signature and add about a sixteenth of an inch above and below and you have the height dimension of your cover. Nine and five eighths of an inch. As an aside, if your Ulfa cutting knife blade gets dull, you can snap it off along the perforation with some pliers. Be sure to dispose of the used blade safely. Cut a piece from the larger sheet, paying attention to the grain direction. It needs to run parallel to the fold. This sheet of Pesha Gray has a distinct front and back side. The front is a consistent color while the back has a mottled appearance. Fold the cover in half. It's okay for some excess to be hanging out beyond the fore edge of the signature. You can trim this off later or, if you like, fold it in for some inside flaps. Now that you have your text block and your cover ready, it's time to prepare to sew the book together. First, determine the amount of sewing stations you'd like to have. The book requires at least three stations. You can decide to mark out more than three, but keep in mind that the stitch calls for an odd number of stations. It's a good idea to have one close to the head and one close to the tail, but no closer than 3 eighths of an inch on either side. One in the middle should be sufficient. It may help to clamp the signature in place with a binder clip as you punch through the signature into the cover with your teasing needle. Make sure that the stations line up from the gutter to the spine. Measure out enough thread to go through the length of the spine twice, plus enough to be able to easily tie a square knot at the end and to account for the waste from threading your needle. Thread your needle. This is the best way to do it. Watch closely and practice until you get the hang of it. Bite gently on the end of your thread, wetting it slightly with some saliva. Choke the thread down between your thumb and forefinger until it almost disappears. Place the eye of the needle over your thread and relax your thumb and forefinger. The thread will find its way through the eye. Pull thread about twice the length of the needle through the eye. Flatten a spot on the short end of the thread. And pierce your needle through it. Then pull on both ends of the thread until it pops. This trick secures the needle on the thread without having to tie a bulky knot that will unnecessarily enlarge each of the sewing stations. Begin sewing by inserting the needle through the middle station from the inside to the outside. Pull the thread through until about two inches remains on the inside of the book. Insert the needle into the head station from the outside to the inside and pull the thread until there is no longer any slack on the outside.
Go back through the middle station, but be sure to avoid piercing the thread that is already resting in that station. Insert the needle into the tail station from the outside into the inside of the book. Tie a square knot with the two ends of the thread at the middle station. Left over right and right over left. If you get this mixed up, you end up with a granny knot. I have a video on my YouTube channel showing in more detail how to tie a square knot. Trim the threads and fray them if you like. Deal with the flaps as you wish. I'm tearing or cutting them here, but I'll show you another option on the next book. Separate the pages of the signature using the bone folder, being careful to tear correctly. Now it's time for the second one, the one that counts. The double pamphlet binding builds on everything you've learned in the single pamphlet binding, but it's twice as good, twice the amount of pages, twice the thickness, and in my opinion, if a book is too thin, there's really no point to the book. Whereas the thread is exposed on the spine of the single pamphlet, the thread on the double pamphlet is tucked away on the inside. It's also more than twice as complex a binding. Let's dive right in. We're going to start with the cover. You'll end up using another strip of cover weight paper, paying attention again to grain direction. Nine, five, eights. As with the single pamphlet binding, the height of the cover is no more than a sixteenth of an inch larger than the height of the text block. Begin by folding this sheet in half along the short dimension. Score two more lines, one on either side of the middle fold. I'm using the width of the ruler, one and a quarter inch, as a convenient measuring guide. But you could measure some other dimension if you prefer, just as long as the three lines are parallel. 
Fold the second lines in the reverse direction of the first middle line, creating a paper cover that looks either like an M or a W. Nest the signature snug into the cover and clamp down the inside half of each signature, trapping the tongue into the middle of the stack. You should see the outside pages of each signature floating freely, unclamped. Use your teasing needle to puncture an odd number of sewing stations. I'm going to do five right through the gutter of one signature and out of the gutter of the other. You can measure and mark these if you like. I'm going to trust my eyeballs to get it right. Follow the same figure eight pattern as with the single pamphlet binding, starting in the middle and letting your needle lead you on to the next station. Work your way to the top, then back down to the bottom. I'm transferring the tension of the thread from the gutter of the paper to the thread itself by looping underneath the connection of thread between the previous two stations. This allows me to tighten the thread without tearing through the paper. Pull the thread tight to remove all the slack before proceeding into the next station. Transfer the tension again on the outside by looping underneath the connection of thread between the previous two stations. Pull the thread tight to remove all slack before proceeding into the next station. You always want to be careful not to pierce through the thread with your needle. This will make it impossible for you to tighten up your thread later on. Right here I'm struggling just a little bit not to pierce through the thread so I'm watching to make sure and backing up and then coming through clean. The 
and back through the middle where you'll tie a square knot, right over left, left over right. and trim the thread about a quarter of an inch away from the knot. Fray the ends if you like. Remove the clamps and close the book. Mark a point just outside the foredge of the signatures, one at the top and one at the bottom of each cover. Open the book and measure from the gutter to each mark. Which one is furthest out? Use that measurement to score a line parallel to the gutter and fold the flaps into the book. Carefully separate the pages of your book using your bone folder like a letter opener. Inspect your book. Did you do a good job? Do the head and the tail of the cover line up or are they skewed? Does the foredge line up? Are the stitches even? Is the paper clean? Is it smudged and dinged up? The nice thing about this project is how easy it is to get right. Even if you don't do it right the first time, you can start over at minimal cost in materials and time. Good luck.